Hey everybody, this is Pete Wenzel and today I'm going to show you how to add some background to our scene. In this video I'm going to focus on the sky. Controlling the vegetation growing will not be part of this video. So if you're interested in this topic, check out my linked video. To fill the large emptiness in the background, I would like to first add a half UV sphere, then second create a sky color and third add some clouds right here in Blender. Shift A, add mesh, UV sphere. Increase the size of it until it covers our whole scene. Rename it and create a new collection called background and move the sphere to this new collection. To flatten the clouds a little bit and to give it the illusion of a giant atmosphere which is parallel to the landscape, we divide the set scaling by two. There is no need for a sky under the horizon line. Therefore, we will remove the lower half of the sphere. Change the view mode to wireframe and go to front view. In edit mode we could select all vertices we would like to remove and delete them. Ensure the sphere covers the entire horizon from your current camera point of view. If not, move it a little bit in negative Z direction. To hide the edges we will set the object to shade smooth and in this particular case the inside of the sky dome is important and therefore we need to change the direction of the normals. Edit mode, mesh, normals and recalculate inside. To see the material we are going to add, we need to change the viewport shading to material preview. Add a new material, rename it background sky and split the window to bring up the shader editor. To be able to adjust the brightness of our sky, we change the shader type to emission. I would like to have a slight blue to bright orange color blending and some clouds at the sky. Add a color ramp and connect its output with the emission color input. If you do not already have activated the Node Wrangler add-on, do it now. Select the color ramp and press Ctrl T. Afterwards bypass and remove the image texture node. Currently we have the same issue with the dimension mismatch as already appeared in the material tutorial part 4, which will be linked. Solution in both cases is a gradient node between mapping and color ramp node. Change the texture coordinate from UV to generated. And now we are able to rotate the color blend around Y axis by 90 degree to get the transition from horizon to zenith. In my case the lower color shall be a bright orange and the top color shall be blue. The colors you are going to use highly depend on the type of landscape and the daytime you are shooting. So maybe they could be very different in your scene. If you realize that your camera is outside the sphere, then scale the sphere up and ensure that the horizon is still covered. After changing the color, we could adjust the position of the color stops as well to get the desired result. If you like this video, share it with your friends, give me a thumb up and feel free to ask further questions in the comments below. If you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Now it's time to add some clouds to our sky. Add a mix RGB node and a noise texture. Connect the color of the noise texture with the mix RGB node and the color ramp output with the other input of the mix RGB node. After adjusting the noise scale, we realize that all clouds would look similar. But I would like to have smaller and bigger clouds as well. Therefore I will add a second noise texture with another scaling. 5 and 30 work well and increase the level of detail of both of them. In the next step we have to blend the noises together for a cool and loud sound. <coughs> for this we need to add a mix RGB node and connect all pins. 
there are many possible solutions how to combine the textures. And you can play around a lot with these settings. But I found out that linear light and the factor of 1 with the higher scale at the top pin looks best to me. For the clouds color and the alpha tuning, let's add a color ramp after the noise combination. Add a color stop with white and change the color of both previously existing ones to black with an alpha value of 0. And change the position of them until you're happy with the result. Let's change the viewport to render view to see our result. Oh, it's not as expected, but it's not an issue with the material itself, but we need to adjust the ray visibility in the visibility section of the object properties of our sphere. Currently, the sphere is blocking the main environment light and only emit a little bit of light itself because it's an emission shader. Without shadow rays, everything is a little bit brighter. But I do not see bright light reflections from the light sources. Therefore, I would like to disable the glossy rays too. After unchecked diffuse, the landscape should not be tinted in blue anymore. That's because the sky color emission is currently not affecting the landscape. If we would disable volume scatter, the sphere would have no impact to volumetric objects. Which is not relevant in this case, because there are no volumetric objects. If we would disable transmission, the sphere would have no impact to transparent objects. Which means we could not see it through glass. If we would disable camera, the sphere would not be visible to the camera. Which means it would not be rendered. Two, all of these visibilities could be pretty helpful in certain cases. But in this tutorial we will not focus on most of them. With this knowledge we set the ray visibility to camera only. If you don't like this result, feel free to change the blending mode of the sky and the clouds. Screen looks pretty cool as well. Let's have a test render. If you don't want to have the sky as an object, then you could just copy and paste the nodes into World Node Editor and combine the mix RGB output with the color input of the background shader. I don't do this because first, I like to have the environment lighting separated from the sky and second, I prefer a flattened sphere for the sky to see the clouds at the horizon at a sharp angle. Now we have some sky with clouds at the background. And that would be the end of this tutorial. In the next video I will show you how to add additional landscape at the background to increase the size of our set. Now you have reached the end of this video. But this doesn't mean you have to talk to real people. You may be interested in my new video over there. Or you could watch this recommended video. And as a last opportunity, there are many more videos for you at my channel.